Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy, hope you're all having a good Tuesday. Uh, Bobby Fai here flying solo today. Sheets is uh, out for some doctor stuff. Hopefully he gets better soon. And uh, he should be live with you. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it for live. If I if I did, it would be 630 Eastern. And uh, I'd be really cutting it close because I've got an appointment that I'm trying to get to. So Sheets also said he would be available for live. But uh, we'll work it out between us. And we'll let you guys know in Discord and all that. Um, anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Had a nearly got the big win last night in the NFL. Would have been a six-way chop for the for the lottery thing. So it would have been well over a hundred thousand dollars. Just needed a couple more plays, maybe one more play, even out of Philly. And uh, and we get there, but uh still took down eighth and uh, only had three entries in there. So it was literally like a forty-five dollar investment that got almost a th- you know, uh it was a it was a hundred times on return, but it almost was a was a like 2000 times on return, which would have been really nice. Anyway, good night overall. Uh, actually barely cashed the big ones in the NBA. So I actually felt okay about that considering I tried to fade Banton more than I probably should have. And even without him, I was able to cash in my big ones. So with that said, let's jump over to uh, tonight's slate. It's going to be a tough one. Um, I think we're going to get more news. that's going to make things really chalky in certain spots, but as of right now, it is not the easiest thing in the world to, to sort of navigate here um, there, there, we don't have value. The value we do have is suspicious and yet going to be high owned. So it's just, it's a tricky, tricky overall slate. I'm going to uh, jump over to my screen right now and uh, we'll get into it a little bit game by game. So let's talk about it. Um, Memphis uh, without, without a uh, Bain, I think that uh, jaw is a priority spend up for me anyway. Uh, I have them on both sides as a priority spend, spend up. I also am going to be mixing around some other pieces. Like I won't be playing uh, John Concher over here, but I will play him on FanDuel at 4K. He's getting minutes anyway. And I, you know, we've seen him have these, these outlandish, you know, games before in these spots, but also 4K on FanDuel is reasonable for the early value that we're being projected. Dylan Brooks, sort of the, the logical other guy, like him better on FanDuel at 5,200 than 6K. It's, it's hard for him to get there. He's sort of scoring reliant. So that's the one thing that really worries me, but he's definitely in play as of my early look. Um, and then we have Jaron Jackson Jr. questionable, which is going to keep things, I guess, up in the air a little bit, because uh, if he doesn't play, I think there's some other things we could do. And I think those plays are all become more appealing. If he does play, probably won't play a ton of minutes. So I don't think he's viable, but it would take away a little bit of interest I have in Steven Adams, who I'm really into tonight. Um, I like the price for him. It's going to be a plotting, bruising game with with Joe Val uh, for, from his point of view, even though it's going to be a speed game in general. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. So I just feel like there's going to be a lot of opportunities for rebounds here. And we know that's what Steven Adams can do best. So I do think Adams is, is definitely in play for me on DraftKings. On the New Orleans side, uh, I think you're picking between guys here. I, I, I'm I'm okay with Joe Val, but he's not my favorite. I, I like Zion, but the ceilings haven't really quite been there the way we'd want. I think that on FanDuel, you've got the, uh, the what do we, we don't even have him. Well, Brandon Ingram, not even forward eligible on, on DraftKings. Um, Brandon Ingram, I like him a little better on, on FanDuel at 8K with multi-position eligibility. And I think that you could play McCollum at 7,900, but it's not that exciting, any of those plays for me. One guy who I will have some ownership of that's going to be low-owned is Herbert Jones. I think the minutes are pretty uh, secure for him. And I think in this kind of a pace game, you could see him with one of those high steel block performances because of the pace. And uh, I would lean on him more a little bit on FanDuel than I would on DraftKings. But those guys are all in play. I think this is a really interesting game to consider stacking. On DraftKings, I'm basically not going to be doing anything with this uh, Clippers-Dallas game. I think if you could go want to go for a long shot, you really need value to play maybe Batum at 3,200. Marcus Morris, more appealing on FanDuel at 5,500. Still not that exciting. And... uh, yeah, I'm just really not all that into anything. Zubach, fine. It's just n- nothing really special for me in the Clipper game. Um, and then you get to the to the Luca Price. It just makes it hard. Christian Wood should be coming back, killing my Dinwiddie love. As I mentioned, Dinwiddie was really really good without uh without Wood. You see the numbers he put up outside of the one outlier performance was basically getting there every night. And I think this is a night where five X's may do it for you, especially at the higher prices until we hear about some value. Because right now it is pretty much. Uh, there's nothing to feel like incredible about. I mean, I've got Utah guys like Jordan Clarkson early on in the day and marketing are projected as the highest owned players in the slate. I like both of them. Fine. The Knicks defense has been awful. They have played faster this year. Um, but I, I don't know. This just feels like a really big question mark game for me. Uh, hard to know what to do with Utah. 
hard to know what to do with New York. I think everybody's going to would say go Clarkson and go go uh, Markkinen. I would probably say pick one of those guys. I like the other games a little better today. And you have the same thing on the other side. I think I have it Brunson followed by Barrett followed by Randall on DraftKings. And it's pretty similar on FanDuel. I think I have Barrett a little bit higher because he's a little cheaper, fills a little bit more of a position we need on FanDuel uh, than DraftKings. Brooklyn, Sacramento, this is my favorite game to stack on both sides. Uh, I think it works out well on DraftKings too. I think Royce O'Neal is completely in play. He's basically averaging a 5X here. Now you have some other guys back in the lineup, but he's going to play a ton of minutes, and that's what I want. Again, a good pace game against a team that turns the ball over. Maybe you see those steals creep up to three or four, and all of a sudden he's has a, he has a big game if, it, you know, if the shooting goes well. Um, I, I, I really like Seth Curry. Um, I know that he's shooting reliant, but this is a team that can, you can hit threes against. He hit 10 out of his first 19 threes of the season, put up 31 and 34. While it wouldn't stand out as, as outstanding value initially, and he, and he didn't play the back-to-back, which is why he's questionable, but I'm expecting him to play tonight. Um, but I, I sort of, I'm ranking him a little bit higher than I am Joe Harris, but I think they're both in play. I, I really do think uh, that getting some extra exposure to this game is a good way to go, especially um, the Royce O'Neal. Uh, and then you can play Kevin Durant, Royce O'Neal, and then run it back with my favorite runbacks are um, on the Sacramento side, Sabonis and Fox, obviously. I think I think it's a little too much chalk for, for Malik Monk here. Um, I, there's a high range of outcomes and a guy getting that high kind of ownership with a wide range of outcomes. I still have some interest in him. He's in my first build, but I think I could switch that up and maybe play Kevin Herter instead, who I think is a better bet for for – hitting more of the median score and maybe not crushing, but still going to put you in a pretty good spot. So definitely like Herter as well here. And I think this is probably one of the better games to stack on the slate. I think you can mix up some mix in some Keegan Murray and, and Harrison Barnes too. I think it's a really good game to attack in general. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other plays. I think Sumner would be a flyer. You could take a shot on, on, on DraftKings, but not, not, not my favorite because uh, with assuming that Curry's back, I, I think that that's a, uh, that, that might not be the best time to use him. San Antonio, uh, who knows what they're going to do on a back-to-back. Uh, as of right now, I have Sohan as one of my favorite values. And, I, you know, unfortunately, this is a night where people are probably going to be on him. He's been one of my favorite values basically all the time. And and it's not that I think he's going to smash every time. It's just I think we're, we're catching this kid on the way up. And I think we need to start just keeping an eye on that. It is a back-to-back, so it's not the most exciting thing in the world. The, name, the number one play in this game, assuming that he plays, is Trey Jones, without a doubt. 5,700 is completely reasonable. Who else knows who might sit on a back-to-back? And Trey Jones has just been consistently getting there for us every day, except for the blowouts. And I think that uh, he's a, he's basically a, will be a staple of every lineup, um, assuming that he's good to go. The other ones, Vassal, Kel- Keldon Johnson. I think you just throw away last night's game and say that both are in play, but I'm not that excited. I actually like the idea of playing Podal, who will get low ownership and lower ownership than both those guys. What you have to worry about in this game in general is what happens with Nurkic. He's kept, he's questionable every day and he doesn't play. Um, he played the, you know, last play of the seventh, he's been, you know, the last few games he's been out. And I think Nurkic is actually a really interesting play here against a team that can't guard the big, but I kind of like the idea of you can, you can play as long as you leave money on the table, you can play Podal and then switch to Nurkic. If you feel like, you know, depending on how you think the ownership slants, or you can play Nurkic and always switch over to Podal if Nurkic is out. Um, if Nurkic is out and we hear early enough, Josh Hart becomes an interesting play for me. And I think that Dame's price on DraftKings is a little much. He's 9K on FanDuel, but I don't think it's that much better, different of a play. I've talked about a bunch of reasons why. Um, it, it basically is, you know, he's he turns the ball over. He doesn't get a ton of steals and blocks. Uh, look, you have one steal per game from him uh, and more than three turnovers. So he's got five a game. So it's, it's he translates better to DraftKings. Also, he's going to get his points from three-point shooting. So I think Nurkic, assuming that he plays, would be my favorite play on, on Portland. And I think my favorite play on San Antonio is going to be Trey Jones. So to sum up, I, I don't have, I mean, a, a mass list of priorities early in the day. I think Ja, um, Trey Jones, Sohan, Monk, one of Barnes or Murray, Curry, um, are sort of my, those are my value guys. And then I like the Sabonis Durant mix at the top. So that's a sort of a first look on FanDuel. I'll show you a real quick vision of my first build. I don't love it, but it's uh, it's just a first crack at it because uh, I think there's going to be some news that we hear about later today that's going to open up some more things. So for right now, this is where I'm at. I will post my builds and my core plays on DraftKings and FanDuel. I'm going to be out the rest of the day, so keep in mind that I will get the be- do my best to get everything done, but I'm going to be out uh, at, on an outing with my kids. So, And then I've got the appointment. So, all right. Anyway, good luck to everybody tonight. I hope you crush it. We want to see some screenshots in Discord, and uh, let's make some money, y'all. Hopefully, hope to see you guys live. Good luck, everybody.